May the name of the Lord be glorified. Greetings to you all in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All physically present here, also those who are attending this meeting via Zoom. It is indeed a great privilege God has granted me again to stand before you with the word of God after a month we are back here it's because of God's grace we are back here with good health in fact we had a very tough time while we were in New Jersey Sharon was very sick but God granted us his mercy and she is now okay and it's only because of your prayers we are here in this manner we thank and praise God for his wonderful love and care towards us and we know your prayers valuable prayers are behind all these things we sincerely thank you for your prayer for us and request your prayers in the coming days also for our today's meditation shall we turn to epistle to Corinthians first Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 shall we read chapter 16 verse 13 first Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 watch stand fast in the faith be brave be strong let all that you do be done with love as we all know this is the conclusion of the first epistle of Paul and he is exhorting them watch stand fast in the faith be brave be strong let all that you do be done with love it's a wonderful exhortation Apostle Paul is giving to the Corinthian believers as we study the book of Corinthians we all know there are two epistles in the same name and uh, we all know that the book of Corinthians is the biggest book in the New Testament not to be confused both the epistles has total 29 chapters as we all know Gospel of Matthew and Acts of Apostles has 28 chapters each but this epistle both have 29 chapters 16 and 13 chapters Apostle Paul is writing to Corinthian believers how to conduct themselves in the area where, we, where they live in Christian conduct conduct is the basic theme of these epistles as we study thoroughly this these epistles apostles Apostle wants them to be wise on different subjects they he wants them to be wise to be wise enough in various subjects of their life in first epistle we see Christ as our Lord we all know that he is our Lord he is Lord of all the second epistle we see Christ as the all-sufficient God he is an all-sufficient God that's our experience too he is our Lord and he is all-sufficient God the first epistle is written from Ephesus the second epistle is written from Philippi almost AD 56 these epistles are written as you all know the Corinth is a city in Achaia 
which is a Roman province in southern Greece. Its population in those days was about 7 lakhs. And when we study about the city of Corinth, it is a very rich city, very rich city, very great trading center. Since it was connected to the important ports nearby area, it was very rich city, very popular city, very trading center, and uh, we find a lot of trading going on there in this city. But when we see the morality of this, the uh, city of Corinth, it was in the very low state. In those days, if someone is called as a Corinthian, it is a proverb used in those days for the people who live with a very low moral values. Corinth, church at Corinth also had this impact. As we go through the epistles, we can find their sinful nature, troublesome character, very badly failed to witness the Lord as desired by God. They failed in many way, many areas to witness the Lord. Even today, we find many Christians, they failed to witness the Lord effectively because of their immoral life, because of their disobedience to the word of God. And when we study about the church at Corinth, it was in a very bad shape, very bad shape. We read a lot of problems happening in the church. Divisions are there. Immoral life was there. And a lot of things are happening there, which was against the will of God. This epistle, Apostle is writing to correct them, to exhort them. And uh, when we see, he is writing this epistle out of love. Chapter 4, verse 14, when we read, there we read like this, I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. Though the church received very good amount of admonition from Paul, Paul's attitude towards the believers in church at Corinth is, from his love he is admonishing them. It is not out of anger, it is not out of hatred, it is not out of any ill feeling in his mind, he is admonishing them. But here we, this verse is very wonderful. I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. As my beloved children. His exhortation to the Corinthians is out of his love. This is a wonderful thing. Yes, there he is writing to correct their wrong behaviors, their wrong doings, their wrong life, but it is out of love. We can conclude from this verse that this letter is a letter out of love coming out from Paul. To the Corinthian believers. This should be our experience too. When we exhort our brethren, when we exhort our dear believers, it should be purely out of love. Apostle Paul, many times we see his exhortation is from his love. He wanted them to know how much he loves them. He shows forth his love towards the believers over there. 
not only in Corinthians, when we go to the other epistles also, he writes out of love. Very strong words he uses, but the strong words are purely from his love. Because he is led by the love of the Lord. And he is aware that the Lord loves them too. As the Lord loves him, the Lord loves them too. Paul is aware of that. And as we go further, 15 chapters in the first epistle, we see Paul is writing to correct them, their theology, he is correcting their wrong theology, and he is correcting, he is speaking about the resurrection, and when it comes to this 16th chapter, he is, uh, he is giving, I uh, know, an, an, uh, to watch, he is exhorting them to watch over the things. 16 chapter verse 13 to 14, Paul writes the principles of powerful Christian living. These principles are not optional, but it is the demand from the Holy Spirit to all saints. The verse which we read is the principles of the powerful Christian living. And that principles are not optional. But it is the demand from the Holy Spirit to all saints. Today, as we sit in His presence, these principles are not optional to us too. It is the demand of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit is warning us or wanting us to be watch, be alert. May the Lord help us to be watchful of the things happening around us. May the Lord help us to be watchful in our Christian living. May the Lord help us to look unto Him in our day-to-day -day life so that we may be able to live a victorious Christian life. As we go through the chapters, there are different subjects Paul wants them to be wise enough. The first chapter, we read about Paul is asking them to be wise about their calling. God called us and we need to be wise, en wise enough about our calling. Paul called, first verse we read, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and the sustenance of our brother. To the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Called to be saints. We are called to be saints. We must be aware of our calling. We must be wise enough about our calling. Many people are not aware of their calling. They are not wise enough about their calling. How we are called and what is the main factors in our calling, we can see in the scriptures. Be wise about the Christian calling. We are saints by calling. He called us individually, as we all know. Every believer received a call from God. Every believer's life starts with a divine call. And it is an individual call. As we have listened earlier, Abraham was called alone. We see the book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 2. God called Abraham alone. It was an only calling. We are also called alone. It's an individual call, not a group call. <coughs> Book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 15. 
We read there, we are called by His grace. We are called by His grace. The important things about our calling is given in these books. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9, we read they are called us with a holy calling. A holy calling. We are called by His grace. We are called with a holy calling. And in the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1, we read that we are called by heavenly calling. It's a heavenly call. What a wonderful call we have got. We are very much privileged to be called by the heavenly father. Second Peter 1 3 says, called us by his own glory and excellence. Called us by his own glory. How much privileged we are, we read in these verses. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 14, we read that he called us with upward or high calling of God. A high calling of God. What a wonderful thing it is. Let us remember the calling which we received from God. As we look through the scriptures, great men are called by God himself directly. And we are also called by him. God called Abraham alone. It was an individual call as, I, as we have been listening. Noah, Moses, Jacob, Gideon, Samuel, Elijah, Isaiah, all received the call from God. And we all know what we are called, what for we are called. We have meditated upon those things earlier too. We must know about our call. We must know what for we are called. The chapter 1 is dealing with our call. And we must be wise enough about our call. Chapter 2, Apostle Paul is dealing with Christian message. We must be wise enough about the Christian message. We have a message with us. We have a message with us. The message given by God himself. <coughs> the message is of Lord Jesus Christ. We must be wise enough about the Christian message. Chapter 3, we read about the local church. We must be wise enough about, about, wise enough about the local church. What scripture says about the local church, we must know. As we are in the local assemblies, we must know about the church and the church activities. Chapter 4 verse 1 we read about the Christian ministry. We must be wise about the Christian ministry. We have a different ministry to do. Each and every individual has a ministry to do. God has given us the responsibility on different ministries. And we must be aware of these things. We must be wise enough. And chapter 5 and 6, as we study these chapters, Apostle Paul is exhorting us to know, to be wise about the church discipline. <coughs> church discipline. Church of God must be disciplined. There must be discipline in the assemblies. And Paul is speaking about the church discipline. When we come to chapter 7, there Apostle Paul speaks about the Christian marriage. The subject we need to be wise enough in chapter 7 is Christian marriage. Let's go further. Chapter 8, we read about Christian freedom. We have freedom, but our freedom is based upon the word of God. <coughs> it is not the freedom that we can do whatever we feel like. But the freedom we have is based upon the word of God. The commandments of Lord. Chapter 9 and 10, we study about the personal priorities. We must be wise enough about the personal priorities. Chapter 11 we read about the church order. 
we must be wise enough about the church order chapter 12 we need, we must be aware we must be wise enough about the church which is the body of christ <coughs> about the church which is the body of christ and chapter 13 and verse 14 we must be wise about christian love and gifts christian love and gifts as we all know chapter 13 the chapter of love what love does what is the importance of love how it works and what is love we read in chapter 13 14 also we read about the gifts given by god himself and chapter 15 apostle paul is dealing with the resurrection death life after death or resurrection we all know that we have been reading that portion and uh, chapter 16 we see the conclusion of this epistle and 16th chapter as we read we must be watchful of the things happening around we must be watchful about our life everything and in this epistle apostle paul is asking them a particular question repeatedly he is asking them a particular word is used repeatedly in this epistle this night i would like to show you few verses apostle paul is asking them he is asking them no you not no you know do you not know he is asking them do you not know the main problem with the corinthians believers is that they are not aware of certain things they were not knowing certain things about 11 times apostle paul is asking corinthians that do you not know ningal ariyunnillayo they must know the things which is given in these verses they must be aware of the things which are dealt in these verses <laughs> but they are not knowing the main problem <coughs> with every believer is that they are not aware of certain things in their life shall we go through the that verses what are the verses what are the questions apostle paul is asking to them shall we turn to the chapter chapter 3 verse 16 very familiar verse chapter 3 verse 16 do you not know that you are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwells in you so wonderful question paul is asking do you not know the question mark is there <coughs> do you not know that you are the temple of the living god that the spirit of god dwells in you why paul is asking this question to them there is a reason behind it if they were aware that they are the temple of the living god temple of god they would have kept themselves holy that's the reason behind it corinthian believers are not aware that they are the temple of the temple of god that is the, that is a fact they were not aware that's why we find in the corinthian church lot of immorality lot of problems going on this 11 questions paul is asking in different subjects different subjects it's really wonderful to learn these subjects do you not know that you are the temple of god these questions are relevant to us too every moment the spirit of god is asking you and me do you not know that you are the temple of god we are the temple of god we must be aware that we are the temple of god if i am aware that i am the temple of god i will try to keep it holy i will definitely try myself keeping away from unfilthy filthy things and holy things that is the question the apostle paul is asking do you not know that you are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwells in you every believer is the temple of god and in him the spirit of god is dwelling 
This we must be aware in each and every moment of our life. Wherever we go, whatever we do, this awareness should be in us. We must be wise enough to know these things in our life. The greatest problem Corinthian church faced is that they are not aware of these things. And if we are not aware of these things, the after effect of that is a life which is not pleasing God. The result of that is a life which is not pleasing God, which will not bring honor and glory unto the Lord. That is the result. They do not know these things, Corinthian believers. Second question, he is asking chapter 5 verse 6. Again, chapter 5 verse 6. Your glorifying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? It speaks about sin. Little leaven. That resembles sin. Our Lord himself said about the leaven. Here, do you not know that a little leaven, a little leaven, there is no need of much. We all know in the assembly, a person enough, a single person is enough. <coughs> In the house of Israel, we read about Achan. What all happened there, we know. And because of Achan, Achan, how much they have suffered. Only one Achan is needed. There are a lot of problems. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. May the Lord help us to be wise enough the, in this fact. I should not be a leaven, a sinful man. Rather, I should not be doing immoral things. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Paul is asking them, do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? He is speaking in this chapter, chapter 5, as, as we all know. The immorality was going on in the assembly. And after that only he is speaking that a little leaven. He was pointing towards that person, that particular person who is living in sin. Even that sin is not found in, among the Gentiles. Do you not know a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Third question, third question, do you not know? Chapter 6, verse 2. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Here Paul is asking, do you not know that saints will judge the world? <coughs> saints are going to judge the world. That's what we read here. And Corinthians, they are not aware of that fact. What do they do? They are judging others. They are judging others. They are judging their co-brothers. Co-believers. If we are aware that we are going to judge the world, then we will not judge our brother, our brothers and sisters. They are judging each other. What do we do in our life, day-to-day -day life? We judge many things. We judge our, our brother who is in fellowship with us. Paul is asking, do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Here what happens, they are going to the court. They are going to the Gentiles for settling their problems. Third verse, do you not know that we, are, we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Paul is asking them, do you not know that we shall judge angels? 
God has given us the authority. Oh, in Corinthians, God has given you the authority to judge the angels. But you are unable to settle your problems. You are going to Gentiles to settle your problems. It's shame on you. Chapter 6, verse 9. Verse 9. There we read, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Here Apostle Paul is saying, Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Unrighteous. Living unrighteously. Oh, it is really pathetic. Anyayam chayinduvan. Daivarajam avagasam akkayilla. Anyayam chayinduvan. Living unrighteously. What is our experience? What, what do we do in our day-to-day -day life? May the Lord help us to be wise enough in these areas. Chapter 6, verse 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? This is also a wonderful thing. We must know. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? My body is members of Christ. Christ is the head. I am his members. Then Paul is asking, Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Do you not know? May the Lord help us to know who we are, what our Lord wants us to be. 6 verse 19, chapter 6 verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not of your own? The first part we all know, we have read about it. And the second part is very, very much important. He says, you are not of your own. <coughs> you are not of your own. Do you not know that you are not of your own? That means we cannot live a, live a life which is, which we feel it is our own. No. We have a life to live in according to his will. That is an important thing. Chapter 9, verse 13. Do you not know that those who minister the holy things, eat of the things of the temple, and those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar? Do you not know? It is very much important that we must do all these things. But the main problem with the Corinthians, they are not aware of these things. They were not knowing all these things. Verse nine, verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 24, there also we see this question. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? It is an exhortation given to us, run in such a way that you may obtain it. At the same time, we must be aware that those who run in a race all run. We have to run our race. Every individual has to run their own race. We have different race to run. It is not my run my brother has. Maybe some, some difference is there. God has given me to run a race uh, that we must be aware of. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Examine yourself as, you, as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you? 
is a wonderful question. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Christ is in us. We must be aware of that. Whatever we are doing, wherever we, go, we are going, we must be aware that Jesus Christ lives in me. He is living in me. May the Lord help us to be aware of these things. To be wise enough on different subjects Paul is dealing with. The problem with the Corinthian church is that they do not know these things. And the difficulty is that we cannot be alert if we are not aware of these things. And uh, ignorance, ignorance. The result of ignorance is losing the effective Christian life, powerful Christian life. Not only that, we won't be able to enjoy the Christian life in the will of God. That is the main thing. May the Lord bless us, continue to help us, so that we may we are aware of these things. Shall we come back to chapter 16, verse 13? Be watchful. Watch. Stand fast in faith. We need to watch. And stand fast in faith. What for we should watch? We watch for our Lord's coming. We need to watch what is happening around us. We need to watch the things which is hurting in our life. We must, we must be very careful. Stand fast in faith. Be brave. Be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. This is the final exhortation Apostle Paul gives to the Corinthian believers. Let all that you do be done with love. May the Lord help us to do everything with love. Nothing short of the Christian love. May He help us in the coming days to do all things in love and love alone. May his name be glorified.